Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and today's live show is presented by our good friends, Butcher Box. New deal with them. You can get two 10-ounce ribeye steaks for free in every single order, plus $10 off for an entire year. That is an incredible deal. Go to butcherbox.com slash NFL Daily. We're going to put that in the comments and in the description of today's show, which then leads me to this question. It's about... What, two, we're about 48 hours, no, it's even less than that, 36 hours away from Thanksgiving. I plan on eating a ridiculous amount of food on Thursday. I can't freaking wait. My question to you, though, is what's the best thing that you eat on Thanksgiving? Because growing up where I did, we would eat steak for Thanksgiving. A lot of people thought that was weird, but you know what? My family was a little outside the walls, and we were like, I, I don't want to just commit to turkey. You can get turkey from Butcher Box. You can get steak. But what is your favorite thing to eat on Thanksgiving? Let me know down in the comments section. Also coming up here on today's show, Chugs, a lot of news and rumors. We're going to do two mailbacks today, so an even longer show than normal. And then I got my top 10 players that I'm going to be watching in the Raiders and Seahawks game on Sunday. So let's give some shout-outs. And then, Chugs, I want you to tell me what you got. So... Green, tamales green, potatoes, tomatoes tamales from Raiders 04 which I am gonna be having some tamales on Thursday that's usually what my girlfriend's mom makes hey prime rib from Brian Hill mashed oh. potatoes from Brian Dar I'll make me hungry Juan Hernandez stuffing pecan pie from Mushashi 06 Stu stuffing or dressing what you what do you call it yeah stuffing okay yeah I've actually never even heard somebody call it dressing. Mashed potatoes from Frosty, Red Bull, ham from Giovanni Tejada, chicken and rice from Lil Dame, chocolate cream pie from Raider 508. Do you like, is turkey overrated? No. A good turkey is not overrated. A good oh. turkey's not overrated. I've had like two good turkeys in my entire life. Green I don't know. Beans, tomatoes, tomatoes. I'm not, I'm not that big fan of, a, of turkey. You also, name it. Mashed potatoes. I'm also not going to get any mashed potatoes. I'm not a mashed potato fan. Oh, wow. Okay. You're. That's <laughs> a per For me, that's a perfect Thanksgiving bite is you get. Brian Dar just said no. You get mashed potatoes, <laughs> turkey, gravy, stuffing, and a little bit of cranberry sauce on top. All of that in the same bite. Oh, my God. That's so good. Yikes. That is. I, I mean, I can do the ham, mac and cheese. I'm all about it. Somebody said pizza. See, pizza. I just. Deviled eggs, give me all that, man. I'm I could eat that kind of stuff, but I save up my appetite for the dessert. Give me the pumpkin pie, give me the pumpkin roll, give me the pecan pie. I want all of the desserts. That's what I look forward to on Thanksgiving. Now, remember guys, if you send in a super chat, we'll put you up on the show. The first one that came in was from Ryan Bass said, first super chat, back to back live shows. Wow. Ryan, first super chat. Always trying to get it in. Giggity, let's go to the greatness of, of the, the Raiders. Raiders. Mitch, for comparison to this season, the 1983 Super Bowl Raiders. Defense sack total was 57. <laughs> Tied for second in the league that season using a 3-4 scheme. I mean, we know how pathetic the Raiders' defensive line is. And imagine if you didn't have Max Crosby. Max Crosby is the only player on the Raiders roster this season that has more than two sacks. Yep. That's sad. That's uh, it's it's unbelievable. In fact, I if you would have told me, Mitch, what's the worst that you think that this defensive line that this unit would have been in terms of getting after the quarterback, I would not have even been able to come up with how bad the Raiders defensive line has been this season. Let's go to one of my dudes here, Y.O. Raider 307. Take the best available player in the first round if we draft a quarterback. I hope we avoid Young, develop a rookie from a later round behind a veteran quarterback, and build around him. Not a big Young fan. I mean, I, I think this. If you want upside at C.J. Stroud, I like Bryce Young's game, though. I'm not really going to take that away from him. Here's the thing, though. I kind of, I kind of agree with Wyo. The more and more I look at the draft, the more and more I see how this Raiders team is constructed. If we're in the top four, which right now we have the number four overall pick if the NFL draft were to start today, I'd either A, trade down, take a guy like Jalen Carter, take a guy like Will Anderson, build up that defense, and then if you get a quarterback in free agency, let a quarterback, I don't know, like a Will Levis, who you could probably get in the second round, if I'm being 100% honest, or somebody else like a JT Daniels uh, late and learn behind. 
Mitch just loves next year's class. I do love next year's class. <laughs> You're man. like, F this year's class. Let's make a legit defense. You, I mean, Caleb we'll Williams get... and Drake May to me. I would rather have Caleb Williams over C.J. Stroud, and I would rather have Drake May over all of them. So to me, yeah, I'm not afraid to say it. Mitch is raggling available against Seattle at linebacker. He is on the practice squad, though. I'm not really going to hold my breath in terms of them trying to get him out and get him more playing time for the simple fact of they want to get some of these younger guys more reps. Let's face it, Reggie Ragland is not a long-term option here for the silver and black. Raider Sanchez, Tamales, and Pozole mm. all day this Thanksgiving. So it's funny. I, uh, I never had this before. What I'm looking forward to tomorrow is mole. I don't know if you've ever had oh, I mole, love dude. I love chicken mole. Mole, my, my girlfriend's mom, she makes a mean, mean mole. And, and actually, at times, it leaves you going, holy moly. All right, y'all, if you want to be called a lord or a lady or a laird, <laughs> go to EstablishedTitles.com slash chat. And we got an awesome holiday gift for y'all, extra 10% off. So the Raiders Report is sponsored by Established Titles. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. It is a project based on historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords, ladies in English. Title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Edelson, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. We plant a tree with every order and work with global charities, one tree planted, and trees for the future to support global reforestation efforts. You can officially include the title order later in your credit card, plane ticket, dating profiles, etc. It makes a great last minute gift and the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking distance depending on how many of you want to become a lord or a lady we can buy our own little raider nation. It makes an amazing last minute gift. Established Titles is actually running a massive early Black Friday sale right now with discounts up to 80% off. Plus, if you use this code CHAT, you get an additional 10% off. So go to EstablishedTitles.com slash chat. We're going to be hitting you guys with a lot of Black Friday sales today, a lot of sales in general because we know the holidays are right around the corner. And, well, I don't want you to be like me and wait till the very last minute to, to get a gift. This is our... This is our Raiders Black Friday edition. I'm just going to tell you all right now, today's live show, Raiders Black Friday. If you need gifts, this is the show to watch because we don't have just one sponsor. We don't have two sponsors. We don't have three sponsors. We don't have four. No, we do. No, we do we have do four. Have, we, we have we, four sponsors. Four Just Win Baby sponsors today. Why? Because we're trying to hook you guys up with some awesome Black Friday deals. All right, here's the question. Be honest with me. That's what that's what family's about. Being honest with each other. Can the Raiders still make the playoffs? Why for yes and for no? I'm just going to read the responses. Okay. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Keep a tally in your head. In, right. in, why, why, in, why, why, in, in, why, in, why, why, in, why, why, why. In why in in why in in why 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 in why why in in why 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 in 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 why in 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 why in in. All right, so thirty-seven ends and forty-six Ys. Yep, exactly. I mean, I get Damn. it. People still want to have faith, and technically, if the Raiders went out, clown mask, you go ten and seven, and you got a good shot to make it. In fact, I even ran some numbers with a simulation. And even if you go 9-8, and eight, there is still like a above 40% chance that you can get into the playoffs. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> so I'm saying there's a chance. Here's the issue, though. The three games that you've won this season, Broncos, Broncos, Texans. <laughs> Raider 508 said that's a dope beat. Oh, what was the dope beat? In in why in 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 why why in in why 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 in 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 why? There we go. We're going to get a copyright claim from yep. YouTube. Somebody apparently owns that song. I can already see it. I can already see it. I want to say this. Can the Raiders make the playoffs? Yes. I'm, I'm not going to predict them to make it. This is a team that's very far away from making the playoffs. If they can get to six wins this season, I would actually consider that an accomplishment considering the fact of where the rest of their games are, who they're going up against. Yes, there are some winnable games there, but nobody actually thinks that this team is going to make the playoffs. Do you? Do you? Or you're just blind faith, which, hey, I appreciate. Let's go to Andrew. Read the heavy article, Carr plus a third for Rodgers. I mean, I would do that in a heartbeat. Personally, I think the Green Bay Packers would laugh at you to even think of that. 
I get some people are starting to read heavy articles more often now. I, I always kind of view them as fan-sided, where it's just <laughs> crazy ideas left and right. I mean, personally, I don't even know if it was Derek Carr, Darren Waller, and a third. I mean, if I'm Green Bay, I still don't even know if I do that. I get the fact that Rodgers has been bad, but Rodgers doesn't have any talent there whatsoever. If, if Carr, though, wanted to get traded, go hang out with Basaccia. If all it took was Carr and a third rounder for Rodgers, yeah, I mean, I I can't even believe that that's even somebody would put that in an article because that's a no-brainer to me. All right, y'all, with the Raiders, they got the Seahawks this upcoming week. Let me know who you got, LV for the Raiders or SEA for the Seattle Seahawks. We are going to be battling it out with our Seahawks Today channel on YouTube. And Tyler's been talking some crap, and I get it. The Seahawks have been playing well this season. But you know what? I get that there's a lot of people out there that want to tank. And I get that there's a lot of people that want to have that better draft pick. To me, though, nothing is ever guaranteed in the draft. And I have such a healthier week. <laughs> like, honestly, I mean, I have a mentally such a healthier week when the Raiders win. And I enjoy those wins so much more than I try to sit here and say, oh, I want the Raiders to lose. I want the Raiders to win this game, man. It, it's crazy. I actually asked our Seahawks host, Tyler Jones, I said, do you think the Raiders can beat the Seahawks this week? You know what he told me? <laughs> no. No! <laughs> oh, that's if, a great if impersonation. I told you, if, if I told you before this season, you know, the Raiders could possibly upset the Seahawks in Week 12. That's insane. I mean, I actually think when I looked at the Raiders' schedule, I would have made the argument that the easiest game on that schedule would have been the Seahawks. I can show you. Hey, you get good coaching? It's amazing. Let's go to Lord Buddy Bear. We're not making the playoffs with a current coaching staff. Not a pessimist, just a realist. And I think it's okay. I think it's okay to sit up here and say, I do not believe that this team is going to make the playoffs because, let's face it, so far this season, they have not shown us that they're even close to a playoff team. And It's okay to not be okay. It's okay. This season has been definitely... Definitely crazy. Let's go to Sir Chai 87. Seattle bad like the film Wakanda Forever trash. Was it bad? I haven't seen it yet. Uh, Alex and I were going to plan on going to watch it because I didn't I, think it was better than the first film. Well, but, not too many are. Actually, yeah. the very like one of the very first dates that Alex and I ever went on was a drive-in movie to see the first Wakanda. Black Panther. Yeah, that was a great movie. That was an incredible movie. I, I just I don't know if I expected it to be better, right? Yeah. Like I, I don't know if you ever expect the second one to be better. Let's go to Brandon Jasper. Heavy can kiss my <laughs> fill in fill locals. in fill in the blank. <laughs> Heavy can kiss my local. Heavy can kiss my big time Willie. What's your mindset if we're at seven and seven? I mean, if we're at seven and seven, then you have to be thinking playoffs, right? If you're 7-7, seven and seven, that means you're on a five-game winning streak. And then your final three games are Pittsburgh, the 49ers, and the Chiefs. You should have beat the Chiefs in Week 5. I want to beat the 49ers. I don't care if the Raiders have three wins entering that 49ers game. I want them to beat the 49ers. The Chiefs might be resting their starters in that last week, too. And they could be. I mean, they're already going to have the AFC West, I would imagine, locked up. And if they are sitting their starters... It gives you an opportunity, man. Like, if you're 7-7, seven and seven, you can beat Pittsburgh. You can beat the 49ers. They don't overly impress me. Plus, if there is one coaching staff that I think knows Jimmy Garoppolo well, it is the coaching staff that the Raiders have. Will they be able to stop them? We'll see. But, hey, man, if we're 7-7, seven and seven, it's... <laughs> That's uh, I'm not I'm definitely not against that whatsoever. So here you go, guys. Use hashtag Raiders or Super Chat. Get your questions on the show. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna answer a lot of y'all's questions in probably about 15 minutes or so. We do have two mailbags today. So we got some Raiders news, some rumors. The Las Vegas Raiders they worked out a player today. I'll talk to you about him a little bit. Oh. I've seen some trending rumors out there. Some stories from Bleacher Report. ESPN had some interesting things to say about the Raiders quarterback situation. Two mailbags, and then my top 10 players to watch for the Raiders going up against the Seattle Seahawks. Before we get into all the news and rumors, if you haven't already, please like the video. I'm going to get a sip of water here. 
We're at what? 115 likes, 676 people. Sergio, I saw you before the show started telling people to hit that like button. And then here's our MVP of the week, Trivan. What up, Trivan? Cheers to you, bro. Glug, 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 glug. Glug, glug. <laughs> A lot of glugging. A lot of glugging. B-Rabe gets it. B-Rabe. See, B-Rabe's always on top of it. B-Rabe knows. Giggity. Tisha, I mean, do we have uh, somebody from San Francisco in here spamming? I'm, I'm not really sure. If we could get that 49ers fan out of the chat, just spam I Raiders. Thought, I think we have a couple 49ers fans spamming. I saw somebody with some yellow I, and red hearts I mean, I, earlier. I don't know why anybody would do that. Brian, cheers to you, bro. Black Sheep, thank you, thank you. I think we're ready to get in today's show. Hang on, I just saw some news pop up. Giggity. Oh, boy, that one hurt a little bit. All right, guys, so remember, news and rumors, and then we're going to get into a mailbag today. A lot of Black Friday deals, so if you need to go Black Friday shopping, if you need to prepare for the holidays, not one, not two, not three, but four sponsors here on the Raiders Report. So you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. I, I, I mean, I think I'm ready. You guys good? Here we go. Coming up right now here on the Raiders Board, the latest news and rumors around the silver and black. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. And before we get into today's rumors and nudes, I got to give a major shout out to today's sponsor, Manscaped. If you haven't already, go to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. They make a great holiday gift, and uh, she likes getting her stocking stuff. There you go. Get set up with Manscaped. So coming up here, we're going to talk about Derek Carr. We're going to talk about some trending stories around that because Bleacher Report and ESPN had some things to say. And here's the first story. This will be Derek Carr's final season with the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm going to give this one three just win babies, and I do believe that it's pretty likely. If you are just joining the show for the very first time, if I give something three just win babies, it means I believe it's a 75% chance of it happening. So Bleacher Report released a story titled The Toughest 2023 Offseason Decisions Facing NFL Teams After Week 11. Their question, their topic was, what comes next for Carr in Las Vegas? Bleacher Report believes that Carr is going to be the scapegoat. This has been a topic that we have discussed numerous times on this show. Simply by saying, if the Raiders aren't winning games, and if Mark Davis is committing to Josh McDaniels, McDaniels and Ziegler are going to be like, well, it's not our problem. We didn't get to pick our quarterback. They're going to make Carr the scapegoat, which is one of the reasons why I believe you saw all the emotions that you did after the Raiders lost to the Indianapolis Colts just a week ago. So here's what Bleach Report had to say on the whole Derek Carr saga. It's been a disappointing season for the Las Vegas Raiders, who were widely expected to be contenders after making the 2021 postseason and acquiring Devontae Adams and Chandler Jones in the offseason. Despite getting a win over the Denver Broncos on Sunday, Las Vegas has stumbled to a 3-7 and seven record, and someone is going to take the blame. With Raiders franchise owner Mark Davis supporting first-year head coach Josh McDaniels, quarterback Derek Carr could become the scapegoat, which I 100% agree with. The moment that Mark Davis said all the things that he did by saying that the Raiders are doing a fantastic job, Dave Ziegler saying that the Raiders were 2-5 and five and they thought McDaniels was doing great, you knew that they were going to try to make Carr the scapegoat. Here's my question to you, and it's right now the live poll as well if you're watching on the live show. Will Derek Carr be on the Raiders next season? Why for yes and N for no? I'm actually going to make this the pinned comment on today's video. So when you're getting hit with that YouTube ad break, scroll on down. You're going to be down there for a few seconds anyway. And answer this one for me, please. Why for yes and for no? Will Derek Carr be on the Raiders next season? My answer is no. The only way that I'm going to say yes is if DC takes a major contract reduction I guess he is scheduled to make like 32.9 million in base salary Th that like that's not going to happen if, if I'm the Raiders and I'm McDaniel seeing how DC and how this team is played then the fact that Mark Davis has already picked McDaniels over Carr that tells you almost everything that you need to know right there for me the only way Carr returns is if this you win at least eight games this season because you were two and seven at one point 
if you can show that much improvement and if DC can really get this offense clicking, you get to an eight games, you show that the front office, okay, Derek's making strides, he can learn this offense. But not only just learning the offense, I still think that there's a possibility that the Raiders bring in a young quarterback to learn underneath Derek Carr then. There's a lot of different scenarios. But as it stands right now, if the Raiders do not win games, if DC does not improve, I just don't understand why McDaniels would keep around DC. It's not that I don't like Carr, but McDaniels is going to pick himself, and I do think that they could make them the scapegoat. And, I mean, let's face it, the Rams might be the easiest game out of your next three, and then your final four games, the Patriots' defense looks legit. The Steelers, that's your easiest opponent. 49ers, not going to be easy. The Chiefs, maybe they decide to rest their starters. I don't exactly know. All I know is this. As it stands right now, the Raiders will not keep Derek Carr, in my personal opinion. So seeing all those stats, seeing the schedule, how many games will the Raiders win this season? It's time to look into your crystal balls real quick and let me and the nation know how many games will the Raiders win this upcoming season. My crystal balls are telling me somewhere around six. That's my prediction. Yes, right now you're three and seven. I hope they win out. I hope they go to 10 and seven, but I got to base it off of what I've seen this entire season. And beating the Broncos twice and the Texans once really isn't anything to get too crazy about. Something that you should get crazy about, Manscaped products. And if you haven't gotten your hands on the lawnmower 4.0, you got to make sure that you do it. Guys, it's important to make sure that your Christmas tree is actually trimmed up during the holidays. If Santa Claus wants to jingle all the way downtown, and if you know you saw Mommy kissing Santa Claus, it's probably because he's using the lawnmower 4.0. Use promo code Raiders at manscaped.com. It's going to get you 20% off and free shipping. I don't want Santa to be the only one slaying this holiday season. Jeremy Chuggs, he's going to have eight crazy nights. You know why? Because of lawnmower 4.0. So use code Raiders at manscaped.com. It's the best male grooming tool to make sure that your tool is working A-OK. -okay. You can use this bad boy in the shower. It's got a light at the end of it. It doesn't vibrate in your hand. And you can see when it's about to die on you because if it dies on you and you got half the tree trimmed, it's going to look a little bit lopsided, which I don't want to happen. So manscaped.com, code Raiders for 20% off. So again, we're talking about Derek Carr's potential final season here, right? That's the main discussion point. It's going to be the topping, top, probably the top talking point for majority of the offseason, whether it's fair or not. Here's the issue, though. The media heads, they talk about the quarterback position, which then me, me doing my job, I got to talk about the quarterback position. So ESPN's Dan Graziano also chimed in on the whole what happens next with Derek Carr, what's next for him in the offseason, and he said this. What's really interesting is the likelihood that quarterback Derek Carr, not McDaniels, takes the fall for this. Remember the contract extension Carr signed last offseason? Yeah, well, it really wasn't. Carr has no guaranteed money left on his deal after the season, and because the Raiders don't like to put signing bonuses in their deals, Carr got a compare or got a small signing bonus of 7.5 million. He did get only 7.5 million in terms of guaranteed money next season, right? Like he did not get all that much. And as it stands right now, Derek Carr's got 15 touchdowns, 5 interceptions, 2,435 yards. When you look at those numbers from a 2020 pace, right, 17-game pace, you're sitting here at 62.4% completion percentage, 4,140 yards, 26 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. If the Raiders were a playoff caliber team, these would be okay numbers. The issue is you're 3-7 and seven and this is your pace. That simply can't happen. But you know what? I told myself I'm going to be more glass half full guy. And over the past three games, to me, Carr has shown some improvements. Sure, the completion percentage is a little bit lower. But you know what? I don't really care all that much. 814 yards, six touchdowns, zero interceptions. The Raiders right now are number one in the NFL in giveaways. They've only turned over the football seven times. Three of those came in week one. Derek is slowly making strides in Josh McDaniels' offense, and you saw that this past week when the Raiders were finally able to win a one-score game. So looking at Carr, whether you think it's fair or not that he's going to be the main talking point when you're paid the amount of money that he is, when you're made the quarterback, 
you are always in the spotlight. So grade Derek Carr's performance this year and be real with me because I always try to be real with y'all. A, B, C, D, or F. How would you grade Derek Carr's performance this season? I'm probably going to be somewhere around a C, C+. Plus. Have they dealt with injuries? Yes. Has the offensive line struggled at times? No doubt about it. Carr can be better, and I'm hoping that he will be better. Coming up here now, more Raiders news and rumors. And since we're talking about D.C., well, the other part of that conversation, Bleach Report and ESPN, was the possibility of drafting a quarterback in round one in 2023. As it stands right now, my gut feeling is this. It is only one just win, baby. A 25% chance that the Raiders take a quarterback in round one. And the only reason why I'm going to give it only one just win, baby, is because I don't think somebody like C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young fall to the Raiders if let's just say they're somewhere around a the number four overall pick. I don't see either of those quarterbacks falling to number four. On top of that, I don't really think that I believe that the Raiders try to trade up and get into that area. So if the season were to end today, this is what the 2023 NFL draft order would be. Texans at one, Panthers two, Bears three. Raiders four, and the reason why the Raiders are still, I guess, have the higher draft pick over the Broncos, which technically is, it's, it's Seattle's pick, but this was a part of the Russell Wilson trade. It's schedule difficulty, strength of schedule, which still belongs to the Raiders. So I'm sorry, I don't see Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud falling down to number four because the Panthers, I would almost guarantee you take a quarterback, and there's going to be another team that might actually try to jump up. Hell, the Texans might try to take a quarterback. This is what Bleach Report had to say on potentially taking a QB in the draft. Carr has been an above-average quarterback during his tenure with the Raiders, but he wasn't selected by the current regime. The draft could give McDaniels and general manager Dave Ziegler a chance to get, in quotes, their guy. A prospect like Stroud or Young could have a higher upside than Carr, but he will also be entirely unproved, unproved at the pro level. Could the Raiders keep Carr and draft a quarterback to develop behind him? Absolutely. But the San Francisco situation shows that an easy transition isn't guaranteed. My take is I don't think McDaniels wants Carr to develop a quarterback. To me, if the Raiders are going to try to go this route where you're going to get a QB to develop a guy that you draft. The two names to watch, and I've been saying it for weeks, months realistically, Tom Brady, Jimmy Garoppolo, both quarterbacks that have worked well in McDaniel's system. And let's face it, I would rather have Tom Brady groom my next quarterback than Derek Carr. And maybe if DC decides to take a super cheap deal, then that's a totally different conversation, but we'll see. Also, I'll say this. I do think that C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young have higher upsides than DC. You have to look at the talent, right? Carr is a good quarterback, and I'm not saying that he's not a good quarterback, but when you watch some of these other guys, like you watch Justin Herbert throw the football, Carr's not even close. You watch a Patrick Mahomes, I'm not saying you're going to find a Patrick Mahomes, but you know what? If you're going to draft a QB in the top five, you're hoping to find a Justin Herbert. You're hoping to find a Patrick Mahomes, and if you can stumble on one of those dudes, that totally changes your team. Now you could end up like the Jets and never be able to find any talent whatsoever. So to me, I can understand the idea of moving on from Derek Carr because I don't think you have anything to lose. And a lot of people are like, well, Mitch, the Raiders quarterbacks were bad for a long time. You lose Derek Carr. We could go back to that area. Then so be it. Derek Carr, whether it's his fault or not, the Raiders have never won a playoff game. You've never won a Super Bowl. And in the NFL, that's what it's about. So if you've never won any of those things, I believe that you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Plus, you're going to gain $110.68 million. That's why I can confidently sit up here and say, I really do not believe that Derek Carr is going to be back next season. Josh McDaniel, Dave Ziegler, not in the regime, and he hasn't played all that well this season to deserve to come back considering how much you can get out of from his contract. All right, y'all, Thanksgiving is right around the corner, and my favorite thing to eat for Thanksgiving, you ready? Pumpkin pie. Freaking love it. Get some Cool Whip on that bad boy. I love pumpkin roll. Now, maybe if I had to choose between other apple pies, pecan pies, we can get into that. But before the show started, I asked Jeremy, rate it, 1 to 10 pumpkin pie. He looked at me, he said 8. And I agree, I'm also going to give this an 8. What would you give pumpkin pie? Because I always see it's very split. I'm going to be looking because this one 
very important to me. Final question here on the Raiders report, or topic if you will. Devontae Adams, the GOAT among Raiders wide receivers. This one's going to give me some flack, and I already know that. I'm going to give it four just win babies. And what I'm going to say here is this. I believe if Devontae Adams plays the next five years with the silver and black, people will regard him as the greatest Raiders wide receiver of all time, which is saying a lot. He won't have the insane numbers that a Tim Brown has, but when I think of just overall talent, and I think of overall at their peaks, and you guys, please feel free to disagree with me if you want because I wasn't alive to watch a lot of those other great Raiders players, right? But to me, this reminds me a lot of the Bo Jackson-Marcus Allen discussion. Marcus Allen is probably the greatest Raiders running back of all time because of his longevity, but be real with me, at their peaks, at the absolute high, would you rather have a Bo Jackson or would you rather have a Marcus Allen? To me, Devontae Adams is right now the Raiders' Bo Jackson, and Tim Brown was the Marcus Allen. All incredibly great, but you got to look at the numbers because this season, Devontae's on a tear. He's got 64 grabs, 10 touchdowns, 925 yards. Then you look at the Raiders' single-season records. The target, 1997 by Tim Brown, 162. Darren Waller, 107 catches back in 2020. Tim Brown, 1,408 receiving yards back in 1997. Touchdowns, Art Powell, 16 in 1963. I look for a pitcher for Art Powell. Wasn't the easiest, I know, hard to believe. So here's the thing, though. When you look at the Raiders' single-season records, and then you look at Devontae Adams' 2022 pace, He's on pace right now to break the targets record with 190. On pace to break the receptions record, 109. Yards record, 1,573. Touchdown record, 17. What's most frustrating to me about these numbers is this. Devontae's having an incredible year, and yet the Raiders are 3-7. and seven. Personally, I'm the type of dude that you can take a lot of these numbers and you can shove them up where, wherever the hell you want because if you're not winning games, doesn't really matter. I don't know, but I do know this. When I watch Devontae on the field, he's the best guy out there. there there's nobody in the NFL that I believe one-on-one -on -one can match up with him, and he knows it. The Raiders know it. So can we get him even more targets despite him leading the NFL with 120 right now? So here's my question. The best single season by a Raiders wide receiver from Devontae Adams. Is he going to accomplish that this season? If you believe at the end of the year this is going to be the greatest year ever by a Raiders wide receiver, type G for greatest. If you don't, then you can type NG for not the greatest. All I want you to do is consider wins, losses, seasons, 16 games, the 17 games, different eras of football. All of that deserves to be in this conversation. Before I leave y'all today, hey, we got some news here. The Las Vegas Raiders, they worked out. Calvin Turner Jr. He played two seasons at Hawaii. He's a wide receiver slash he also played a little bit of running back for the Rainbows. Is that right? The Rainbow Warriors. I always forget. It's like the Warriors, Rainbow Warriors, one of the two. Here's the thing, though. The reason why I believe that they brought him in, special teams ability. You know that this coaching staff loves special teams and ability, and I was told by a source that they could potentially look at other options as a punt returner because Keelan Cole has been, well, not so great whatsoever. If you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications because if you miss anything going on around the silver and black, it's on you. It's not on me because we're going to have videos here every single day. All right, guys. Do you like cranberry sauce? Yes or no? We're going to hit you with a lot of Black Friday deals and... We're going to hit you with a lot of Thanksgiving Ooh. Day questions. I'm already hungry. I'm already the chat, stoked. The chat's getting, sp was getting spicy with that uh, Devontae Adams question. A lot of Gs. A lot more Gs than I expected. Yeah, I mean, I think from a talent standpoint, Devontae is trending in the right direction. And I also think it is a lot of recency bias because Tim Brown's 16-game season back in that era where guys were allowed to get smacked, I can make the argument it might be more impressive than Adams. However, I'm also projecting Adams over the next five years to Ooh. continue to get better and better and better. And this again. is also this is also pretty uh, interesting as well. A lot of no's with the cranberry sauce. Yeah, I love cranberry sauce. I, I I love cranberry sauce. I think it can. I see. I like savory and sweet. Mm -hmm. So I don't like sour cranberry sauce. When I lived in Germany the one year, uh, my the family who I was with they made Thanksgiving Day dinner for me. And the cranberry sauce that they made was super sour. 
super sour. Wait, they, oh, they did it for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was like, they don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Well, yeah, <laughs> they did it. They did it for me. So it was super, super sour. However, like my family, they make it sweet, and I, I'm all about it. I ben, love it. Ben, f all the cranberry haters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ben. I mean, I'm kind of with you. I, I like cranberry. I'm sauce. fired up. I'm a man. I'm forty. I love cranberry sauce. Robert doesn't like it, though. I can't believe that. Iron Bar just said pearl onions. No idea what that means. You don't like pearl onions? They're like the little onions. No, I, I know what pearl onions are. I don't know what he's referencing. Maybe he likes pearl onions. <laughs> hey, I know we're talking about cranberry sauce. Pearl I got, onions. I got a real hankering for some pearl onions. Does anybody want a pearl necklace? If you know it. You know what I'm talking about. All right, y'all, coming up next here on the Raiders Report, it's time to get into a mailbag. So if you have sent in a super chat, if you use hashtag Raiders, it's going to be the easiest way to, for you to get on the show. Now, if I don't get to your question the first time, don't panic. We got another mailbag at the end of the show, probably coming up here in about 30 minutes, so stay tuned for that. Don't worry. Don't worry. We got more sponsors, and if you like the T-shirt that I got on, then I think you're really going Some to like the – great news for you yeah, if you like that T-shirt. It, it is really, really good news. So don't worry. Coming up, we got a mailbag coming up here. So, again, it's hashtag Raiders, or you can super chat, get those questions – and comments on the show. Y'all ready? We got 815 people watching. If you haven't hit that like button yet, I would greatly appreciate it. It would be something that I would even say oh, wait. I'm thankful for. We only have 200 likes? Only 200 likes. Dude, that's cold. Brandon Jasper. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Brandon you know, getting more clever I gotta, day by day. I got to put those L3s in there for him. Yeah? So I can uh, put I mean, it up whenever. What the hell is hair pie? Siege hair pie? It's, uh... I don't know. Robert it, Montoya, we love you too, man. It, It's a uh, Urban Dictionary thing. Mm. So... I, I probably won't look that up. You just got, uh, you just got got. Friends. I just got got? Yep. It's, Peach uh, cobbler? Oh, believe, man. believe it or not, that's actually not a food. What, uh... What, the... Hair pie. Oh, really? Yeah. That's hard to believe. I think I know what it is. In fact, I know what it is. I tried to finesse my way out of it like Harry did earlier in today's show. Didn't work. Didn't work. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, guys. 800 people watching. Let's get into this mailbag. I'm going to answer y'all's questions for the next 15 minutes or so. So use hashtag Raiders or you can super check at those questions and comments on the show right now. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and today's mailbag is presented by True Classic Tees. And we got a special offer because it is right around Black Friday. 25% off your order by going to trueclassictees.com slash chat. If for whatever reason you can't remember that, and if you like the t-shirt I got on right here, because uh, they are really comfortable. You can wear them to work. You can wear them to work out. All of that good stuff. It is going to be in the comments and in the description of today's video. So the reason why I love mailbags is it, this gives you the opportunity to ask me questions. It also gives me the opportunity to see what you're thinking. The Raiders Report might have over 126,000 subs, and if you're not one of them hit that sub button but mailbags is like what built this show giving the nation a voice so here we go first one coming in here is from li raider 312 a decent schedule ahead get our act together and we could make the playoffs sure right i mean the raiders have winnable games they're going to be underdogs against seattle they're going to be underdogs against the chargers they're probably still going to be underdogs against the rams i really believe the only game where they might not be an underdog is pittsburgh and even that game, they might be an underdog because they're on the road. I get it. There's a lot of excitement around this team, right? We want the Raiders to win. But when you look at the AFC playoff picture, it doesn't really give you a lot of hope. There's a lot of 3-7 and seven teams. I don't believe the Jets are going to be very good. We'll see maybe if the Chargers can collapse. But do you really think that the Raiders are going to get in over any of the teams that are in the playoffs right now? My answer to that is most likely a big fat no. Let's go to Y.O. Raider 307. 49ers fans get Raider fans sloppy seconds. I mean, there are more Raider fans than 49ers fans. I can concur. Black Sheep, in fact, when I watched that game in Mexico City, Alex even said, 
I think that Raider fans are better than 49ers fans. Javi, California, play to win. Raider Nation, a rookie ain't the answer. I don't 100% agree that a rookie ain't the answer. I do believe, though, NFL teams are built where you should always try to win, right? Like, you should always try to win. I don't like the idea to tank because tanking's not guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed in life. And definitely first-round picks for the Raiders are not guaranteed either. So when you guys watch this video, it's going to be Thanksgiving. I'm hanging out with my family today, so no Thursday night football watch party like we usually do. Hopefully you all understand that. But I genuinely want to know, what are you thankful for? I wish I could be with my family back home in Pennsylvania. I can't wait to spend it with Alex, her family. We're going to be chowing down on a whole bunch of food. I want you all to know I am thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my chat sports family. I'm thankful for the in nation. And I am very thankful for my dog, Chuck, because uh, that's my homeboy right there. So what are you thankful for? Let me know. Let's go to the next super chat coming in here. It's from Alan Cruz. After seeing the celebration in the locker room on Sunday, I almost had tears in my eyes. I finally saw a team that fought hard, a team that had each other's backs, keep fighting, keep winning, and don't tank. You, uh, Alan, we love you too, bro. I'll say this. I could not agree with you more, right? The amount of tank talk, the amount of frustration, you saw that that team wanted to win. I mean, that was weeks of built-up anger, and you finally were able to win that close game. And to me, a win like that, a reaction like that in the locker room, that helps you carry yourself going forward because a win like that can be contagious, especially at this level. Let's go to LC Raider. I was at the game on Sunday, Mitch. Us Raider fans in the stands really needed that win, brother. Oh, and my boys won me another free jersey. Good job, boys. LC, I'm glad. I had a lot of Raider fans tell me that there were you know, more Raider fans than, than there were Bronco fans at that game. I know the nation always goes out and shows out. But to me, I get that people, again, they want to tank. But I am a much happier person for the entire week when the Raiders win. And the Raider Nation deserve that win. Let's go to Adrian Navarro. What up, bro? Just say they do not just say they do cut Carr or trade him. What does Devontae Adams do if that happens? Will he bail out of Las Vegas? Maybe get to Tom Brady, D-A-L-V, still draft a uh, quarterback. I'll say this. I don't think no matter what, Devontae leaves. When I listen to Devontae Adams talk a lot, I mean, he's said multiple times how he grew up a Raider fan, how he wants to be a Raider, how his family can now come to games. And I also know that he probably sees the last $40, $80 million on his contract. If I'm the Raiders, if I'm Devontae Adams, I say, hey, I'm not going to leave. But you got to guarantee me that I'm going to get that full money. Like, Adams also, I, I believe this. Yes, he's good friends with Derek. And I said this on Graphic Raiders show over the weekend. When you're really good friends with somebody, you want what's best for them. And I believe Derek would want what's best for Devontae. And if Carr leaving, then that's fine. You can wish him the best. I don't think Devontae Adams leaves, though. I, I really don't. And I think it's a crazy narrative to think just because Derek Carr leaves that Devontae Adams wants out. To me, that's a crazy narrative to push. Let's go to Cameron. Well, Adams is great. When Waller and Renfro get back, he won't be targeted as much. Maybe. I mean, he's still been targeted even when those two guys we're playing. Hunter Renfro has not been a good fit in this offense. And even Darren Waller, he's getting work here and there. But if you're the Raiders and you don't target Devontae Adams 10-plus times every game, that's just bad coaching. I don't care if he's triple teamed. Your first read should be Devontae Adams. And then if he's triple teamed, well, then your second read is probably going to be a wide-open receiver. Devontae deserves those looks because he is that dude. And if you guys haven't already, join me all season long. We do watch parties every single week. We do live shows every single week. We're going to be doing, having a crazy off season. I already know it. And if big time Raiders news happens, we're going to be going live. So hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. That way you all never miss a video here on the Raiders Report. Let's go to one of my dudes here, Brandon Jasper. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's locals, locals, locals. Who? It's locals for the best content, personal interaction, and weekly pick them. Brandon, thank you. And what he's talking about is we do exclusive content over on locals. Brandon, I actually had somebody ask me the other day if this was uh, a burner account from Chat Sports, which I thought was really, really funny. Now, Brandon's one of our most loyal watchers. He's always on locals. We, we have good conversations. This week on locals, I'm going to tell you all what my top favorite Thanksgiving Day foods are. Plus, we'll do an extra Raiders content-centric video. Raiders Let's go to Hellcat Q. 
Bang! Got my boot today. How about that W? Well, I'm glad you finally got the boot. That definitely makes me pretty freaking happy. I know a lot of people out there, I want y'all to get your boots because a lot of people don't understand how difficult it is to actually take down three beers. It beats you up a little bit. Cameron Sproul, what up, bro? Adams did take the ponies DBs to school, though. I think the ponies, they tried to line up Patrick Sertan on Devontae, and Devontae after the game flat out said he's not ready. There's not many cornerbacks in the NFL that can match up on a consistent basis with Devontae. Patrick Sertan's going to be a good player in the NFL. But putting him on an island with number 17, no, I'm telling you all right now, that's, uh, that's not an island that I want to be on. Now, today's mailbag is presented by our good friends over at True Classic. And you can get their True Classic tees using promo code CHAT. It's going to get you 25% off. They make an amazing holiday gift. True Classic has already helped over 2 million men look great in their tees, and now you can save big while you do so. Get 25% off True Classic with exclusive link, trueclassic.com slash chat. And the discount doesn't stop there. You'll save even more during their site-wide sale. Support our, support our show and check them out at trueclassic.com slash chat. They give you the wide shoulder, the tapered bottom look while we're looking for or and the quality of the t-shirt is elite. From going to the gym to your first date, there's no better look than a fresh tee. So get 25% off at trueclassic.com slash chat. Free shipping included on purchases over $100. That's 25% off at trueclassic.com slash chat. Santa won't be the only one slang thanks to True Classic. I've worn these shirts a few times on these shows. I have the black polo, the gray polo. I actually also have this maroon polo as well. They fit me amazing. They're comfortable. They're super like stretchy like... They are unbelievably comfortable shirts. And if anybody's a golfer, I bet you this, it's the best damn golf shirt you've ever had. I suck at golf, though. TrueClassicTees.com slash chat. What up, Brandon? NBA, a 24-second shot clock. Raiders report 60-second shot clock. Let's do it. We'll do, a, we'll do a shot clock near the end of the show, Brandon. Here's the issue. When we do shot clock, Daniel Jimenez pops out of nowhere, and he just goes, bang, shot clock, and then I get all left up. Hellcat, Lord Mitch. How you think Tillery did, I thought pretty good. I, I actually was impressed by Jerry Tillery. I thought he was able to create consistent pressure. I had a few people be like, Mitch, did you see Jerry Tillery's PFF grade of 42? PFF is good at some things. PFF also gave Max Crosby a 50 grade in the game against the Broncos, a game where he had six tackles, two sacks, three tackles for a loss, what, three quarterback hits, a blocked field goal, and a forced fumble. Sometimes PFF grades don't make sense. Let's go to Jeff Acosta. I've been told David Zahn's in the chat. That's never good, especially if we play shot clock. He even said it. I'm here too. <laughs> uh, in my honest opinion, if Carr balls out, keep him, build the defense through the draft. You're right. If Derek balls out and shows improvements in McDaniel's offense, then I am totally on board for keeping him. The issue is this. If Derek doesn't ball out and you're still losing games, it doesn't make any sense for a coaching staff to keep him again when you can save $110.68 million or use the $33 million in Derek's contract next year and you can invest that into your defense. That's what I would do. Brandon, since no Thursday karaoke, can I get one chugs? We, can, we might be able to do some karaoke at the end of today's show. What do you think? We, we might be able to do some karaoke at the end of the show. All right, so here's the thing. Since we're not going to be here on Thursday because you're watching this probably actually on Thanksgiving if you're watching it on a later date, what's the better Thanksgiving side dish, stuffing or mashed potatoes? I'll say if it's garlic mashed potatoes, give me garlic mashed potatoes. If not, I'll probably take stuffing. If I also have cranberry sauce, cranberry sauce and stuffing to me is better than just plain mashed potatoes. Honestly, though, I probably won't get any mashed potatoes for Thanksgiving. But I want to know. Thanksgiving, y'all. It's here. What's the better side dish? Let's go to LC Raider. I wish you were there with me, buddy. Watching that walk-off touchdown to Adams, I was at the north end zone, and I swear it felt like <laughs> it happened in slow motion. If you haven't seen my video that I posted on social media of basically the, the interaction that I had in the last fourth quarter, and then the last touchdown drive, I mean, it was incredible. We already know, Raiders games, uh, it's a roller coaster ride of emotions. But it felt so freaking good to finally get that win and to beat the Broncos. I'm with you. I felt like I was in a movie. It was, 
Yeah, oh, man, it was just a huge weight off all of our shoulders. I wish I was there too, LC. Believe me. Let's go to Clash with Zeus. What up, man? Who's going to be covering D8 this Sunday, and how do you match them up? I'm curious to see what Seattle does. If I'm Seattle, I put Tariq Wolin, who, if y'all remember, was one of my favorite prospects in this year's draft. I put Tariq Wolin on Devontae Adams because Wolin is super physical. He's long. Is he a rookie? Yes. I wouldn't do one-on-one -on -one coverage. I would always do one guy and then have somebody over the top helping out your cornerback. But the reason why I would do that is because if you can hit Devontae at the line, that's going to help you out. The issue is Devontae's the best on the line making you miss. It, he, you can't stop Devontae. If you target Devontae Adams 10 times a game, he's going to catch five out of those balls, and he's going to hurt you on one of them. And that's just that's because he's great. Let's go to Hell Raider. What up, man? Would you franchise tag Josh Jacobs this offseason? I think it depends. I think you have two options. And I actually asked this on my YouTube community poll today. Your first option is this. You franchise tag Josh Jacobs. To me, then, I'm not bringing back Derek Carr. If you bring back Derek Carr, then I'm not going to franchise tag Josh Jacobs. Jacobs deserves to get franchise tagged at $12.7 million. If you're planning to get a young quarterback, like a, one of these young rookies, then, yeah, you better franchise tag, franchise tag Jacobs to help out one of those young dudes. If you don't plan on taking a young quarterback and you plan on maybe bringing Carr back or going out and getting a, a veteran like a Jimmy G or a Tom Brady, then you don't end up franchise tagging Josh Jacobs. Let's go to Manuel. You're next up here on the Raiders' port. Let's say the Raiders don't want to draft a quarterback. They move on from Carr. Brady stays in Tampa. Who is the Raiders' quarterback in 2023? Y'all are going to hate me for this. I'd say I'm going to bet on Jimmy Garoppolo. And this has nothing to do with me thinking that Garoppolo is or isn't better than Carr. This, is, this coaching staff has proven to me that if there's a guy that they like, they are going to pick a player that they like over a guy who might be more talented. And I would be willing to bet that they like Jimmy Garoppolo in their system more than they like Derek Carr. So for that reason, I'll say Jimmy G. Let's go to I'm I'm a wired, I don't know. Who better, C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young? If you're going for upside, it's C.J. Stroud. If you want like a quarterback prospect that I believe has more upside, it's C.J. Stroud. The guy who I believe is safer, though, is Bryce Young. To me, Stroud has that upside to be the best quarterback or a top five quarterback in the NFL. He also has the floor, though, what you've seen with all these other Ohio State quarterbacks. Bryce Young, to me, I don't believe that he can bust. He might not be as great. Giggity. He might not be as great as some other people, but to me, he carries himself very similar to somebody like a Trevor Lawrence. He's just mentally sharp. Like, Nothing can rattle that kid, and that is a very important trait to have as a quarterback in the NFL. Let's go to Hellcat Q. What up, brother? Saving my pennies for Shot Clock 2. Let's go real ones. <laughs> oh, man, Shot Clock seems like it's going to get wild. What up, Phil? How in the world did PFF give Max his lowest grade of the year? Because a lot of times PFF just tries to overcomplicate certain things. Like, I don't see how you watch that game and give, and give Max a 50. Hell, I'd make the argument it was the best game of the season. He had so much impact in that game. Doesn't make any sense, man. Let's go to Vengenzo. Who do you think the Raiders should target in free agency until the offseason? I would say you better target some defensive tackles. You need some defensive tackle depth. You need more defensive ends. If I'm the Raiders this offseason, I spend all my money on defense. Like, realistically, the Raiders' offense is good enough to win a lot of games. But if you still give up 20 points a week, I don't care who you got on offense, you're going to lose a lot. So I would invest a lot on defense. Defense, defense, a little bit more defense. So a lot of games on Thanksgiving. And game one is going to be Bills against the Lions. Game two, Cowboys and Giants. Game three, the night game, Patriots and the Vikings. So my question to you is this. Who you got? I'm going to take the Bills. I'm going to take... Whew, I don't want to take the Cowboys, but the Giants have so many injuries right now. I probably got to take the Cowboys. And here's the real thing. The, if this game was the first game of the day, I would take Minnesota. But Kirk Cousins is so bad at night. I'm probably still going to take the Vikings, though. I'm going to take the Vikings, the Cowboys, and the Bills. That's what I'm going with. 
Let me know, though, who you guys got for all the Thanksgiving Day games. Let's go to Hobby, California. 2020-2021 draft quarterbacks except Burrow are worse than Carr to develop a quarterback under this regime. I mean, Justin Herbert's better than Derek Carr. Tua has been better than D.C. this year. However, I'm not a Tua believer whatsoever in any stretch of the imagination. Justin Fields has been pretty damn good. Like, I would take Trevor Lawrence. I, I'm, I'm simply going to disagree with this take because I, I don't agree with it. Let's go to Cameron. If we eke out a win against Seattle, do we dare dream of a run or not? We can always dream. Raider, I feel like that's what being a Raiders fan is dreaming right like you, you wake up every single week I mean shit we're talking about it right now last week when the Raiders were two and seven it was f this f that we're tanking let's get the number one pick we beat the donkeys three and seven and how many playoff questions have I already gotten you can dream it's what being a Raider fan's all about it's what life's about dream a little bit let's go to juice 89 what up juice what's up Mitch and Chugs happy Thanksgiving and hooray Let's go to some super thanks. Now, a friendly reminder, if you can't join our live shows, their YouTube does have a feature where you can click. It's called super thanks, and you can basically super chat on a video that's not live. So Dan said, thank you for your passion, and I stand with you in the nation 100%. I, not, I cannot believe I bought tickets to the New England game for our first game in Vegas. I had season tickets in Oakland for almost 30 years. Never seen anything as bad and weird as this. I hear you, man, and it's one of those things. I can understand, too, the frustration. The way that I look at games, though, great memories. As many memories as that you can create from that game with the people that you're going with, the people that you're around, you'll remember that forever. You won't. You might not remember the score, but you will remember all that. Thank you for supporting the show. Let's go to Christopher Leonard. Hooker to Vegas. Yikes. We need a hooker in Vegas. Makes sense. The issue is now Hendon Hooker. When he sent this in, I don't believe Hendon Hooker tore his ACL yet. He's done for the year. I don't know what's going to happen with him. He probably would have been a second, you know, late second round pick quarterback out of Tennessee, Heisman candidate. I don't know if he goes in the top four rounds now because of that knee injury. Let's go to Sergio Rodriguez. Raiders for life. Sergio, thank you so much for supporting the show. And remember, y'all, if I missed your question, you can always hit me up on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter for more Raiders news and analysis. And if you want even more exclusive videos, I'm over on Locals. But you already knew that because Brandon Jasper. RaidersReport.Locals.com. Hit me up on social media. All right, guys. Should the Raiders fire Josh McDaniels? <laughs> I don't know if I've said it all week. Feel, felt felt kind of weird, honestly. Fire Josh McDaniels. I felt like I was saying that in my sleep for many weeks. The Raiders won a game. They're 3-7. and seven. They finally won a one-score game. Derek played arguably the best game he's had the entire season. Are you still on the boat that if you had a pick right now, you can get rid of him? Would you do it? Type F for fire. Type K for keep. Show the Raiders fire Josh McDaniels. You want to get some shout-outs here? I'm going to get a sip of water if that's cool. Glug, 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 glug. Um, let's see. Free Fly Jedi. That's a great name. Fire. Uh. I mean, I, it'd be easier to just say the people that are, say keep. Luis <laughs> Munoz, OC to God, they're mm. saying keep. Everybody else is saying fire, like Gabriel, Matthew DeLong, Nestor, Rugrat, Rano, Free Fly Jedi, uh, Humberto Tamayo, let's see, Michael Clark, Hen the Goat, B Rabe, uh, Isaiah, Lightning Shoop, Philly Ow. Cheese Dog. They're all saying fire. Oh, man. I mean, I'm still, if I had the pick, you guys know my answer already. I'm firing that and dude. Wyo Raider. Uh-oh. What's up, Wyo? What we got? What we got? He says fire. Fire McDumbass. Perfect. Fire I, Josh McDaniels. Fire Josh McDaniels. I'll say that's probably the most viral video I've ever put on Instagram. The, the fire Josh McDaniels video I did after when they lost to Indianapolis. That thing got like 90,000 views. That People were sending me that. Left and right, and then the video that was you and I in the beginning was just fire Josh McDaniels. Everyone, people still send me that. They're like, we got to get rid of this guy. <laughs> right? What's, what's up, Brandon? Mitch, did you say locals? Tell us about it, please. It's a great place to get exclusive content, live show <laughs> every week, two exclusive videos, NFL week pick'em challenges, and you probably have seen a few of the guys who have won 
uh, our week pick em challenges here. Why? Because Locals is for diehard Raider fans only. Join us, Raidersport.locals.com. Thanks, Def. That's his Locals name, Def Jasper. All right, guys. Next thing coming up here after Screaming Chicken. Only way we don't fire McDumbnuts nice. is if he wins out the rest of the schedule. All right, guys. I want to create a bit. So I don't know if, you, if you've noticed this. Anytime I have the opportunity to say giggity, I try to. Giggity. Also, anytime I ask for where you're watching from, and if it's not in the United States, I say bonjour. I don't know why. I've always done that. The new bit that I want, you're not allowed to call Josh McDaniels Josh McDaniels. You got to come up with a nickname like McDumbnuts, Mick, whatever. That's the new bit. And here's how I'll know. The real ones will do it. And that's how I'll know you're, if you're a real one or not. Mick shitty trick play. Uh, that's fine. It can be literally anything. It just can't be let's Josh see, McDaniels. Let's see. We have McFart, McDouchey from Mr. <laughs> Leroy. Mr. Leroy. What else? Shot clock. Fire Mc, McDouchey. McNuggets, McDipshit, McDillweed, I'm McDouble, ready. McDonuts, Mc... McClownass, McFlesh. <laughs> <laughs> Lord only Dan's. Of course he would. That's so good. Oh, How man. did that not get blocked, Oscar? I, it's, I'm kind of with you. <laughs> Mick. I mean, what if they actually thought it was a sandwich? <laughs> right. It's, block, block, wait. No, that might be a sandwich. Let it let it through. Let it through. Yeah, we'll let that one through. Cross, cut it off, though. Cut that crust Mick, off. But Mick Ass Cheek got blocked. And so did Mick Dildo. Interesting. Mick Candy Ass. <laughs> all right, this might have been a bad idea. But you know what? It's all good here. Coming up next here on the Raiders Report. What we're going to do is we're going to get into a kind of like a Raiders Seahawks preview. Oh, yeah. But I'm going to tell you the top 10 players that I'm going to be keeping my eyes on in this game. Because even though they're three and seven, you should still watch the game. You still need to see which guys are going out there balling out, which guys deserve new contracts next season, which guys you just leave, let them walk in free agency. All of that is very important. If you send in a super chat, we will get to it in the second mailbag. On today's Raiders Report show. So usually during the season, we only do one mailbag. We're actually going to do two mailbags today because Jeremy and I, we're going to be with our families on Thanksgiving. There's not going to be a live show on Thursday. So coming up right now, Raiders Seahawks preview, top 10 players to watch, and then another mailbag. So you can continue to use hashtag Raiders and Super Chat. What do you got? Oh, no, you you just did it all great. That was. I thought you were about to say something. No. Nope. All right. Nope. F me. Here we go. Coming up right now, the top ten Raiders to watch. But let me get in, let me get in the right spot of my script. Okay, we're in the right spot of our script here. Coming up. Whew, you ready? All right, let's stretch it out a little bit. Here we go. Top ten players to watch against the Seahawks. And then when we get into that final mailbag, we'll do a shot clock for y'all right before we get into that final mailbag. Sound good? I hope it sounds good because, well, that's going to be the plan. All right, y'all, you ready? Coming up, top 10 Raiders to watch against the Seattle Seahawks. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. And coming up here on today's show, we are going to look at a preview of the Raiders up against the Seattle Seahawks in this NFL week, is it 12? Week 12 matchup. And what we're going to look at is the top 10 players that y'all need to keep your eyes on. I have them ranked from 10 all the way down to one. One being the guy that I'm going to watch the closest. So you got the three and seven Raiders on the road in Seattle against the six and four Seattle Seahawks. I can't believe I'm saying this. We're trying to upset Seattle. If you would have told me that weeks ago, I probably would have laughed at you. Now, here's the one thing. I know that the nation has been tired of the losing. Jeremy and I, Chugs and I, we're going to be partying on Sunday. And the more people we get, the better the party is. So if you could set a reminder... Tell, hey, Siri, hey, Alexa, set a reminder to join the Raiders Report Watch Party against the Seahawks. Or you could hit that subscribe button. You could turn on that notification bell. That way, when we schedule the live, that way, when we go live, you join it. It sends an alert to your phone, and you can help us cheer on the Raiders against the Seahawks. So let's go to number 10 here in my top 10 Raiders to watch. I'm going to say rookie defensive tackle Neil Farrell Jr., I want to see how this young man continues to grow in this defense and what we could potentially expect in the future. In week 11, his snaps, he played 23 snaps up against the Denver Broncos. That was 36%. His PFF grade, as you can see, imagine coming home and you gave your mom or your dad a test 
and it had a 28.4 grade on it. Not great. He was benched in week 10, and he did not play well in week 11. Well, when you're drafted as the top defensive tackle in last year's draft that the Raiders took, you're expected to perform. He's supposed to be that run stopper. I said when they originally drafted him, he's going to have some growing pains, but he's a big boy. And I want the big boy to show me that he can go out there and, and he can be a reliable defensive tackle. Plus, on top of that, the Raiders have already been making some DT moves, which we'll talk about a few of those guys coming up here in just a little bit. Let's go to number nine on my list. It's Mad Max. Max is must-watch television. So you're going to see some players on here that you're like, well, yeah, no shit. Well, guess what? This is a no shit. Max Crosby is the best defensive player on the field. You can make the argument when he's out there, he is the best player. I don't know why PFF gave him a 50 overall grade against the Denver Broncos and arguably his best game of the season, but hey, it is what it is. Crosby has nine sacks this season, and he played 100% of the snaps that this past week against Denver. What more do you want from this guy? You have a cornerstone player. You got a top 10 defensive player in the NFL right now. Can somebody, for the love of God, get him some help? If I was a dad and I had a young kid who was learning how to play defensive end, I would say, watch Max Crosby play because he's relentless. He never gives up on plays. The bend that he has, the wiggle that he has, the ar the just arsenal of moves, whether he can beat you inside, he can beat you outside. Crosby can do it all, and that's why he is must-watch television, so you better watch number 98, though. No. You're going to be watching him. I can guarantee you that. So who you guys got in this game? Type LV for the Raiders or SEA for the Seattle Seahawks. Anytime I do a video like this, usually the opposing team's fans, they come in the chat. They try to rile us up a little bit. So here's the thing. If you got the Raiders, spam LB. Let's go to number eight here on my list of my top ten Raiders to watch against the Seattle Seahawks. I'm going to go quarterback Tyler Hall. Some of y'all, if you missed last week, are like, who? Who is this kid? Oh, he wasn't even on the 53-man roster. They promoted him, and he actually played pretty well. He was in the game for 18 snaps, 28%. He did not get the start. Amik Robertson got the start. Here's the thing, though, man. If I'm playing or if I'm watching, it's not always who starts. It's who finishes the game. And Tyler Hall was in when it mattered the most. In fact, he even got more snaps than Amik Robertson. PFF graded him out at 73.1%. He even got a sack. Like, right now he is tied for the lead for the Raiders for most sacks this season with one. Max has the most with nine, but Tyler Hall is a player to watch. Very impressed with him. And earlier last week I said, I want to see guys who play with a lot of heart, and I want to see guys who go out there and give it their all. Tyler Hall gave it his all. Now, remember, y'all, today's show is presented by Butcher Box. Dad, if you're watching him, yes, we brought back butcher box and we got a brand new awesome deal we hooked you all up with a free 10 to 14 pound turkey for the holidays well guess what if you go to butcherbox.com slash nfl daily we're gonna hook you guys up with two 10 ounce ribeyes for free in every box for a whole year when you join plus an additional 10 percent off so that's free ribeyes ten dollars off that's free ribeyes for a year plus $10 off at butcherbox.com slash NFL Daily with code NFL Daily. Me personally, I've had a lot of different foods from ButcherBox. When we first started doing this sponsorship, we hooked you up with some free range chicken. Then we hooked you up with some turkey. And now I can't wait to get my hands on these ribeye steaks because everything that I've ever eaten here from ButcherBox has been incredible. And during the holidays, it's stressful. I don't know about you, man. I don't like going to the grocery store. Call me. Call, you can say what I want. My dad makes fun of me. What do you mean you don't like going to the grocery store? I don't like going to the grocery store. So the fact that I can sit at home, <laughs> order the food, and it gets delivered right to my house and I never have to leave, it's simple and it tastes great. So if you got a family, if you love steak, high-quality steak, and remember, I'm going to say this again, two 10-ounce ribeyes for free in every order. You get this deal for a year. ButcherBox.com slash NFL Daily. Get started right now. That link's going to be available for you guys in the comments and in the description of today's video. Let's go to number seven here on my list for players to watch, Thayer Munford. I've been very impressed by the growth, giggity, of Thayer Munford this season. Munford was a player that I had as a fifth-round grade out of Ohio State. Raiders got him in seventh round. He struggled early on. And one of the things that I told y'all, he was once a first-round potential pick 
had some injury issues, and I said if he can work with Carmen Brasillo, if you give him some work, he can show that he can get better and better. Well, this past week, because Colt Miller was out, Jermaine Illuminor played left tackle, Thayer Munford played right tackle when he started. And according to the PFF, he was the best offensive lineman that the Raiders had, 61.8 overall grade. Munford is a really athletic player, and if he can stay healthy, he's going to be a good player in the NFL. He might not ever be a pro bowler. If you can find, though, a reliable tackle in the NFL, that's a big thing, and it's something that this Raiders team desperately needs right now. I want to see Munford out there. I want to see him continue to grow and grow and grow in this role, and if you can find a right tackle in the seventh round, phenomenal value there for the Raiders. Ooh, let's go to number six here. It's Jerry Tillery at defensive tackle. One of the reasons why I put Neil Farrell Jr. on this list is because Jerry Tillery outplayed that man right there. And if you want to make sure that you can secure your job for the rest of the season, you're going to be battling out with these two people because Tillery, to me, stepped in and had a solid game. Week 11 snaps, 23, 36%. I don't care what PFF says. They're going to give him a 42.6 overall grade. I, I disagree with it. To me, he created consistent interior pressure the entire night. To me, he is one of the biggest reasons why Bilal Nichols finally had himself a halfway decent game. This was the best defensive tackle game that the Raiders played all season was against Denver. Here's the thing, though. Now you got to go up against Seattle, against a better offensive line, not a great offensive line, but a better offensive line, and can you improve? You're going to have a full work week. You're going to be working with Andrew Billings. You're going to be working with Neil Farrell Jr., working with Bilal Nichols. Jerry Tillery is absolutely a player to keep in mind. So here are the latest odds as of the time I am making this video, which is on Tuesday of the Raiders' Week 12 game up against the Seattle Seahawks. The over-under is set at 47.5, and, and the Seahawks, Three and a half point favorites, which, to be honest, I am happy the Raiders aren't favored in this game. So knowing the over-under and knowing the fact that Seattle is the favorite, give me those score predictions. Seriously, look into that crystal ball of yours and tell me your score predictions for the Raiders up against the Seattle Seahawks. Let's go to number five now on my list of players to watch. Number 17, Devontae Adams. Well, no, duh. If you don't watch Devontae Adams, I don't know what the hell you're doing. Yeah, you can keep your eyes on the ball all you want. If I was a young man and I was trying to be a wide receiver, I would watch Devontae. He might be the best route runner in the league. He is always the most talented player on the field. He leads the NFL right now with 120 targets. And the Seahawks, they got some young, but they got some talented corners. Seattle, one of the reasons why they let Sidney Jones go, who now is with the Raiders, the reason why they let him go is because of their young cornerback talent. Well, you know what? Devontae just made Patrick Sertan look like a little boy. I want to see it again this week from Devontae. Another player that I know that y'all are going to watch anyway. Number four, it's Josh Jacobs. I got to put some of these guys on the list, though, because let's face it. If I did a top ten list and I didn't put guys like Max Crosby, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, I, I would want y'all to question me. And for me, he was running like he, he wants a new contract. He is running so motivated right now where if you were to rank the top five running backs in the NFL, if you don't put Jacobs in your top five, I'm not going to take it serious. Not only is he able to run between tackles, pick up clutch first downs, you saw the past few weeks when he's thrown the ball, he can make things happen. So McDaniels, stop doing the Brandon Bolden experiment. Stop doing the Mir Abdul experiment. You want a good experiment? Put Josh Jacobs out there even more. You said it this week. You're surprised at how good a football shape he is. Give Jacobs the ball 25, 30 touches every single week. Coming in here at number three, we're going to go back to the defensive side of the football at defensive tackle. It's Bilal Nichols. When Nichols was signed this offseason, the hope was that he was going to be the Raiders' best defensive tackle. And he's been just downright terrible this season, except this past week against Denver. Credit Jerry Tillery. Credit Andrew Billings. Credit Bilal Nichols, who finally for the first week showed some life. I, he had energy. He looked like he was finally healthy. And the fact that he finally played a solid game, this might be a crazy thing. When you get interior pressure, it helps out everybody else. Denzel Perriman had a lot of open holes that he could hit the running back, get to the quarterback. Yeah, Tyler Hall was able to get a sack. Crosby had two sacks. Why? It starts up front. And when you can create pressure up front, it makes everybody's life a lot easier. Are the Broncos bad? Yes. Is Russell Wilson a fraud? Yes. But I want to watch Bilal Nichols because if he can continue to play the way that he did up against Denver, 
you might see this Raiders defense look a little bit different in the final seven weeks of the season. Now, before I get into my top two players that I'm going to be watching, remember, y'all, if you want to stay up to date on everything going on around this team and all of my takes that I don't have time, always put out a video, Twitter, Instagram, I've been putting a lot of videos on IG. And to get even more exclusive content, it's Raiders Report. Dot locals dot com. And I wouldn't be able to do today's show without our awesome MVP from this past week. Everybody right now, spam Trivan in the chat. Trivan was our week 11 MVP, and he continues to just ball it out on our watch parties. He's always watching. Trivan, I got to get a hold of you. Maybe we can talk or something like that before Thanksgiving. I always want to say thank you for all the support that you have on the show. You're on our Mount Rushmore for the reason, and Honestly, man, having people like Trivan make doing this job even more fun than it already is. So, Trivan, I salute you, my good sir. Let's go to number two here, Sam Webb, cornerback. You got to watch Sam Webb. Sam is a player who's a UDFA, got some growing pains, there's no doubt about it. And over the past two weeks, he's struggled. And when you're going to put a UDFA in the position that you have, Webb's going to get torched a little bit. And he did. He got, he got worked. He was the worst graded PFF player at 26.7, and watching the game that he had against Denver, I actually thought 26.7 might have been too high. But you know what? I think good players learn from the bad games. So you played bad against Indy. You played really bad against Denver. Here's your opportunity now to flip the script. Am I curious to see how the Raiders use their cornerbacks this week? Absolutely. I'm curious to see how much they give to Tyler Hall. I'm curious to see how much work they give Sidney Jones, who last played with the Seattle Seahawks. I want to see how many reps Webb get, Amik Robertson. If Nate Hobbs is able to play, well, that changes it up too. Sam Webb is a player, though, that I want to be around on this roster because there is upside there. He's just got to take some of his shellackings, and that's what's going to happen when you're a UDFA rookie. Coming in at number one, though, I know, it's boring, but guess what? It's the quarterback. It's Derek Carr. Why? Because he's Derek Carr because that's the number one thing that you should watch because it's always going to be the top talking point at the end of every single week. I'll say it right now. Carr had his best game of the year versus Denver, and he continues to improve in McDaniels' offense. I'll say over the past three weeks, I've been impressed by DC's ability. Yes, he's missed some throws. There's no doubt, man. But Carr hasn't turned the football over, and realistically, if you had a halfway decent defense, you'd be able to win a lot of these games. And the fact that he came up clutch against Denver, bingo, bango. 814 yards, six touchdowns, zero interceptions. Is he playing like a top 15 quarterback? No, he's probably still not in that top 15 range for me. He is improving, though, and that's what you got to hope for, that Derek can improve, with the Raiders can build, and they can rally because I'll tell you what, they rallied behind Derek. They rallied behind Josh McDaniels. They rallied together as a team in that locker room, and that's because you were able to come away with a win. So, Derek, all eyes on you, baby, but you already knew that. So, what player will you be watching the closest versus Seattle? Obviously, a lot of players to keep an eye on. There's, uh, You never know what this coaching staff's going to do from time in, from week to week. My eyes, though, are going to be on these 10 players here. Neil Farrell Jr., Max Crosby, Tyler Hall, Thayer Munford, Jerry Tillery, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, Bilal Nichols, Sam Webb, Derek Carr. Friendly reminder, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, do so and let me know your top players that you're going to be watching Week 12 against the Seahawks. Thanksgiving. We talk a lot about Mount Rushmore for Raiders Report watchers. Our Mount Rushmore for the Raiders Report, Trivan, David Zahn, Raider Ron, Wild, Wild 114. That's my Mount Rushmore for the Raiders Report. <clears throat> However, though, for Thanksgiving, what's the top four foods? When you know Thanksgiving time is coming around, what's your Mount Rushmore? We kind of talked about it earlier. I would probably throw pumpkin and pecan pie. I'm going to throw Two that in. pies. I like pie. Hell, if it was – I realistically could just do, like, apple pie, all this. But if we want to actually have a halfway decent meal, I'll say ham, Ooh. mac and cheese. Ham over turkey. Yeah, I'm not a big turkey fan. Ham, mac and cheese, sweet potato casserole, and then I'll go with one pie, which is going to be pumpkin pie. Mm. But it's because it's the holidays, man. Pumpkin pie with Cool Whip. Give me it. Put it in my veins. Turkey with gravy and cranberry, number one. That's Stuffing. three. That's three. That's three no. things, though. What do you mean, no? That's three it's, things. It, it's all together. That's like saying, like. It's three things, though. That's like saying, oh, enchiladas is three things. 
It's a tortilla, chicken, and sauce. No, it's an enchilada. You said turkey stuffing and cranberry. No, I said turkey gravy and cranberry. Uh, I feel like... Gravy and turkey at least go together. Yeah, That's one. There is also there is turkey gravy and regular gravy. There's white and brown gravy. There's two types. There's ham gravy. Brown. Brown gravy. Oh. Yeah. What? White gravy is so much better. <laughs> on turkey? Not on turkey, just in general. Just in general. What? You don't eat gravy with your turkey? No, I do. I'm not a serial killer. So you eat brown gravy with your turkey? I think Colin yeah, Smith got it right. I just said yeah. brown gravy and you do a throw up voice. And I'm like, no, I'm so you don't general, eat it with I'm your turkey? I like white oh my God. Oh man, turkey and dressing. Um, so Rusty says dressing. Interesting. Got, uh, yes, we. Uh, we've been, there's been some clamors of a shot clock. They, we've been asked if we could do a shot clock. Okay. Okay. Well, since Trace is right here, what if we did a, what if we did a fireball boot? Though? Oh boy, that's We're ballsy. I'm not doing a fireball boot. Since Trace is here, I'll put the time. I'll put the time. Look, around. I'm wearing my Raiders colors. I'll say I'm this though. My colors. Here's the thing. I don't want to do it now. It would have to be after. Like, out, we got another mailbag to do. That's so, true. how about this? For the for the mailbag. Well, then we read the Supers anyway for the mailbag. So, it's like. True. That's all, that's all I was saying. We could just get it out of the way well, now. See, I'd rather, see, I don't want to do 10 shots of Fireball and then go through a mailbag. I want to I do the mailbag. Uh, let's just do the shots at the end. I want to do the shots at the end. I will. I will. No, All right, y'all. No. All right. We'll do it after the mailbag. Okay, Brandon. We'll get the. We'll do it after the mailbag. Let's see. Uh, let's we'll get some shout outs. We have <laughs> green beans, tomatoes, tomatoes, ham, and huh, you name it. Deep fried. See, deep fried turkey is good. Blue Richards, deviled eggs, oh, nope. ham, mashed potatoes, sweet potato Can't. pie. Deviled eggs. I love deviled eggs. Deviled eggs are. Deviled eggs can get it. Deviled eggs can get it. Mac nope. and cheese is number one. Deviled eggs can get it. Yep. Deviled Not eggs a deviled eggs it. guy. See, I love deviled They're eggs. They're okay. Man. Throw a turducken in there. Korean barbecue. Yep, I'm in. <laughs> I mean, I love Korean barbecue. I love Korean barbecue. See, that's the other thing where would you rather have honest, honest Korean barbecue or turkey? On Thanksgiving, turkey. Uh, see, I don't know. I get I get that it's a holiday, but to me, I guess. It's, it's just – nostalgia like i want to eat those things on that day and that's fine i just like eating it, it, better it, food it's like it's like saying like oh on your birthday would you rather have birthday cake or would you rather have korean barbecue i mean if it's my birthday i'm gonna eat both like it, i feel like like that's saying like <laughs> birthday cake or cheesecake if you like cheesecake more then just eat cheesecake don't eat birthday cake but it's your birthday but it's. It, I would rather eat what I like but more. Still, but that can still be a birthday cake. I guess. I guess. I don't know. All right, guys. This is what we're going to do. Mailbag questions. Let's do quicker mailbag, then do a shot clock, put a bow on it, and then we'll get out of here. Sound good? So what we're going to do here, answer your questions for the next 12 minutes. The way that you guys can get on the show, you already know, hashtag Raiders, or you can super chat. What? Hashtag Raiders, <laughs> or you can super chat, get your questions and your comments on the show. So we'll do that uh, next 12 minutes. We'll uh, we'll do our best here to answer your oh, questions. Manny Bruce Salvador, it's, it's your birthday. Happy birthday. It's my birthday, Mitch. Let's run the table all the way to the Super Bowl. Go Raiders. Everybody wish Manny Bruce Salvador a happy, happy, oh my God, birthday. Lord Buddy Bear. There you go. Coach McDillhole. <laughs> oh wow! I lo I love this new bit. In fact, I want to keep it going. You, All right, mailbag kiss, time. Do you kiss Choco Bear with that mouth? Do you kiss Choco Bear with that mouth? Do you kiss Do you kiss Sadie on the mouth? Yeah. Oh my. Okay, good. I Chuck love him. Alex sometimes gets a little annoyed with it, but Rusty T. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's might be clicking on those. Uh... I might have to come over to your house for Thanksgiving. Hot, hot girls in your area. <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, wild ones in the chat too. Yeah, that's this is dangerous. Do we have all the? No, Ron. I don't see Ron. I haven't seen Raider Ron. Yeah, Raider Ron. He's he's he hibernates. Ron just pops out of the most random moments, and you never know. But we got three goats right now in the chat, and we got a lot of other heavy hitters, man. So I am a little bit nervous. 
I am a little bit nervous. A little nervous. Here we go. Mailbag time. I'll answer your questions, your comments, whatever you guys want. Hashtag Raiders or Super Chat to get those on the show in the next 12 minutes. I'm all yours. Raider Nation, what's going on? It's mailbag time here on the Raiders Report. Mitchell Renz from Chat Sports ready to answer all of y'all's questions. How do you get on the show? Well, one, you can join us when we go live on Tuesday, and you can also use hashtag Raiders or Super Chat. Let's go to Cameron Sproul. Mark Davis, biggest mistake, firing Jack Del Rio. I don't 100% agree, and I 100% like, don't disagree. Like I'd say his biggest mistake was hiring Josh McDaniels. Yes, Jack Del Rio did work really well with Derek Carr, but here's the other thing. I don't know if Jack Del Rio could work with Derek Carr because Derek Carr, before the injury and after the injury, I don't care what anybody says, totally different quarterbacks. Alan Cruz, what up? Bummed y'all ain't going to be live Thursday night, but I hope y'all have a wonderful time with your families. Stuff those bellies. Love y'all. The Raider Nation fire. McCook! Um... I wanted to do a watch party on Thursday as well, but I asked, I told Alex, I'm not going to be, we got to work for Christmas, so I had to pick one, so for that reason, got to go home for Thanksgiving. Let's go to Rashissimo Lock. Do we trust baby back McB to develop a rookie, though? I don't. I don't, I don't trust McDaniels to do anything. I really don't, if I'm being 100% honest with y'all. However, when you look at certain scenarios, if you don't have a quarterback, or if you have a quarterback and he's not running your system well, then sure, you might go to a different guy. I don't trust McDaniels. Like, that's the other part of where I don't know if I want to take a quarterback. I'd rather the Raiders, honest to God opinion, I'd rather the Raiders take a defensive player like a Will Anderson, Jalen Carter, or trade back, build up the defense in the draft, build up the defense in free agency, and go out and sign a veteran quarterback that has already worked in McDaniels' system, like a Jimmy Garoppolo, like a Tom Brady, and then go that route. Or Derek takes a cheaper deal. Because I'll tell you this, I do not want Derek Carr back at $33 million in McDaniels' offense. I don't want it. Let's go to Jose. Mitch, what do you think about the rumor about Davis not having enough money to fire McDumbass? Also, can I get a shout-out for my son Logan, Peanut? He is a huge Raiders and Raiders support fan. Well, shout-out to Peanut. Shout-out to Logan and... Um, I don't really buy the Mark Davis doesn't have enough money rumors. In fact, a lot of people that I've talked to said that the guy who said the story was Bill Plaschke, has a lot of conflict with the Davis family. And I've also talked to a lot of people that it's just it, it's not true. It's 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 an excuse because they don't fi they can't figure out why McDaniel's is still around. So they come up with something, they run with the story, and then they go with it. From what I understand, it's not true. Everybody spam peanut right now. If you throw a peanut emoji bonus points now to make sure you guys never miss any videos here on the Raiders report I bet Logan would tell you all to hit that subscribe button and I guarantee you he would tell you to hit that notification bell so what makes the Raiders report different videos every day free videos it's the interaction but it's the fact that you get a super chat telling somebody hey can you give a shout out to my son that's just about as cool as it possibly gets Logan Shout out to you. Let's go to Ron O. One of the best uses of gravy is on a loco moco over easy egg hamburger patty on rice, smothered with gravy, fire Mick Oakle. I'll tell you what, that sounds unbelievable. That sounds really good. <laughs> making me hungry. Let's go to the greatness of the Raiders. Mitch, grade the offensive line play of late. B minus, C plus. The, the Raiders, to me, have done a better job in passing situations than I expected, especially this past week when you didn't have Colton Miller, though there was one play, Jermaine Illuminor literally didn't block anyone. But the Raiders' offensive line hasn't been the problem this season. I mean, I, and I can't believe I'm saying that. <laughs> the Raiders' offensive line has been average this season. Let's go to, this is a new guy, high all the time. Mitch, thoughts on Jalen Carter from Georgia and would he fit with Las Vegas? Jalen Carter is going to fit on any defense in any NFL. He is just that good. In fact, the more and more I go back and I watch some of his tape, because this is starting to be the time of the year where I go watch tape, you guys knew how much I loved J Jordan Davis last season. Uh, Jalen Carter is better than Jordan Davis, and I don't even – not that it's not close – I'll take Carter because he can just totally, totally change your defensive line room. So, do I think he fits with the Raiders? Yes, absolutely. And to me, there's top four prospects in the NFL draft this season. So, here's my question to you. If you had to pick between these four players, would you take 
C.J. Stroud? Would you take Bryce Young? Would you take Will Anderson? Or would you take Jalen Carter? Please let me know down in the comments. Let's go to Brandon Jasper. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Let's go. He wants shot clock. So if you're watching live, we will do a shot clock at the end of the show. Well, I want 14. Just a reminder to all of you old school Raider fans, Seattle was an AFC rival of ours. So we got to send them packing with their tails between their legs. I'm aware of this. I had a few of the OG Raider fans also tell me that this week, which I appreciate you guys looking out. As far as I'm concerned, though, I try to win every week, and especially when we got another Seahawks channel here at Chat Sports talking crap. I want the Raiders to come away with a win this week. Now, remember, y'all, one of our awesome sponsors here, Great Holiday Gift, is Established Titles. And if you want to be called a lord or a lady, like literally legally be called a lord or a lady, go to EstablishedTitles.com slash chat. And I'm going to tell you about it right now. The Raiders Sport is sponsored by Established Titles. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. It is a project based on historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. Title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Eddleston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. We plant a tree with every order and work with global charities, one tree planted, and trees for the future to support global reforestation efforts. You could officially include the title of Lord or Lady on your credit card, plane tickets, dating profiles, etc. It makes a great last-minute gift. The first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking distance. Depending on how many of you want to become a lord or a lady, we can build our own little Raider Nation. It makes an amazing last-minute gift. The Established Titles is actually running a massive early Black Friday sale right now with discounts up to 80% off. Plus, if you use code CHAT, you can get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash chat to get your gift now to support our channel. I've had a lot of sponsors on this show, and I think that this is one of the coolest ones out there. You can literally be called Lord Lady if you want to get this gift for your son for your daughter, for your dog, it applies to all of those things. And it goes towards a good cause because, believe it or not, I do care about reforestation efforts. Let's go to Brandon Jasper. Be real. Do you want DC back? Be honest. I want DC back if he can prove that he works in McDaniels' offense. That answer is yes. If I get the exact same Derek Carr that I've gotten so far this season and I'm looking at that sample size only, my answer then is no, because, again, you got nothing to gain by bringing him back to me. I, I don't see it. I think you can only go up. Let's go to Radagoff Productions. You notice we blitz more. I know, I was actually thinking of you. <laughs> we actually allowed the athletes to be athletes, which have the defenders that swag. Sometimes you just got to let them hang. I mean, I'm with you. To me, these guys are premier athletes, and sometimes in Patrick Graham's system, he just sits back and he makes people think too much instead of just reacting, Okay. Sometimes the best thing that you can do is just let players be athletes and let them react. And what do they do? They blitzed. They let them get downhill. And you saw a lot of good stuff. Radagoff, I'm with you. Let's go to Raider Nation. Joss on Sahir. If we do keep the fourth pick, would you go defensive tackle or edge to help Crosby? I have Will Anderson ranked as the higher overall prospect than Jalen Carter, though I do believe Jalen Carter would be a better fit than the Raiders. So we'll see what ends up happening throughout the season. I want to watch a little bit more tape, but Will Anderson, I do think last year was better than he was this year, and Carter is really freaking dominant this year for Georgia. Let's go to B-Ray. One win doesn't save your job. Hashtag culture. I mean, one win shouldn't. And 3-7 and seven shouldn't be fantastic, B-Rave. What up, Cooley? Is it possible to run the table? Sure. If not, what is the biggest thing that we need to do to get to the Super Bowl next year and take home home field advantage? I mean, I would say the biggest thing you got to do next year is if the season doesn't go the way that you want this year, it's probably find a quarterback, build a defense. And it sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. When you're 3-7 and seven and you're in the place where the Raiders are at this season with a brand-new regime, you're going to look for a new quarterback, and you got to build the defense because this defense is, yet again, terrible. Adrian, what's up, brother? F the C chickens. Go Raiders! Adrian, thanks for being an OG. You've been watching for quite some time. So with that being said, F the C chickens. Let me know who you got, LV for the Raiders, or, yeah, C chickens. Let's go to Project 1337. Love or hate DC, you can argue that he's the reason the Raiders haven't been the laughing stock of the NFL since his arrival. 
let's finish strong. I don't disagree with that. Derek has had to deal with a lot since 2014. Different coaches, terrible draft picks. Uh, all of that can be true. But again, the only thing that has been consistent since 2014 has been Derek Carr. And for me, I like playoff wins and I like Super Bowls. I'm not saying it's Derek Carr's fault. I feel like I've said that a hundred times. However, if you've never won a Super Bowl, if you've never won a playoff game, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. For that reason, it's time to move on. Row in your boat. Should we pick up a Ann or no? I feel like we could pick up Lance if San Francisco doesn't want him or Garoppolo. I, I believe no matter what, Trey Lance is going to be the quarterback of the 49ers next season. They just gave up way too much to really not give him a chance. In terms of Garoppolo, I, I, I think the two most likely quarterbacks not named Derek Carr and not in the draft to be the quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, Tom Brady. Sorry how I feel. Now, if I missed your guys' question, I'm sorry. Hit me up, Twitter, IG. You can also hit me up over on Locals at RaidersReport.Locals.com to get even more content around the Raiders. Quick little shout-out here to our MVP this week, Tribam. Thank you so much, man, for everything that you do for the show, and I know you're going to be there tomorrow. If you want to get a shout-out like this next week, all you got to do is be the MVP during our watch party when the Raiders take on the Seattle Seahawks. So hopefully you all hit that subscribe button. Hopefully you all join Jeremy Chuggs and I because it's going to be one hell of a time. I just hope. Hope we come away with the win because I'm a lot better of a person when the Raiders come away with the win. I'll see you all on Sunday for a big time Raiders game against the Seahawks. All right, y'all, it's time for Shot Clock. Brandon Jasper got to go, but one each for Shot Clock. So here's going to be the name of the game, okay? Name of the game is this. We've had a lot of people send in some supers asking to play Shot Clock. Brandon, he sent in a 20, which is a shot for me and a shot for Jeremy. So this is what I want to do, Jeremy. We usually do Shot Clock is for a minute. But we don't have any Fireball in here, which I don't even know why I don't bring Fireball in the, in the Raiders Report studio. But we don't have any fireball in here. So I'm going to set the clock, okay? Every $10 shot that every $10 super chat that we get, we're going to take a shot. And we're going to do that for three minutes. So three times the length of time. I'm going to give you plenty of time to go get fireball. Also, I think I left my phone out there. So starting right now in three, two, one, three-minute shot clock. It is on, Brandon. This is for you, for everyone else who is asking for shot clock. And yes, we will not be around for Thursday night football this week, which does give my liver a little bit of a rest. But hey, it's all good. Also, the new college football rankings, Georgia 1, Ohio State 2, Michigan 3, TCU 4. Nothing really changed. Michael Clark said another one, Cornish game hens, Italian stuffing, mac and cheese, and pecan pie. Oh, Hellcat Q! Bang! Let's go 51 50 because we are crazy around here. We need to keep that energy going. The team played fast and hyped. Keep it going. Let's stack some dubs. Mitch and Jeremy have a very happy turkey day. You make the season fun. That's awesome, man. So we'll roll through all the super chats once Jeremy comes back and he can push all the buttons over there. And uh, right now we're up to what? Five, six, eight. Eight shots of fireball on the wall. I'm getting nervous. I'm getting nervous. Y'all always like just, I feel like Tuesday shows, you never know what you're going to get. Don't get me wrong. I'm excited for Thanksgiving. And I appreciate all y'all getting ready to party. I was actually kind of upset that I wasn't going to do a Thursday show for the simple fact of I just look forward to watching games with y'all. Driving, Brandon Jasper. All right, so I was just told word is if we get to 20 shots, then Abby said she would come take some shots with us, which right now we are 10 away. 10 away. So I'm going to start pouring up some. We're going to pour up some other ones as well. So hang on a second here. We got about a minute left. Got about a minute left. Michael Clark said another shot for Chugs. I'll go ahead and put on a minute timer right now. You got it. One minute. One minute. 
So we need nine more shots. Oh boy. For Abby to come in here and take shots. Don't shoot the messenger. Yeah, I just. She's just. She said she's trying to work out later, but if we get to a certain number, she's willing to take shots. That's why, honestly, y'all are the reason why I work out in the morning. This is. <laughs> what? This is a heavy shot. That's a heavy shot. <laughs> Mr. Leroy, Brandon Jasper, five away. Five away. Oh, man. Okay, well, this is. That's one. This is one. This is a huge one. One. This is a big shot class, too. Oh, man. Oh. There's one. 30 seconds left. 30 seconds remaining. 30 seconds left. So you took one. I took one. I'm definitely going to need a napkin. Mm. Four away. Four away. Roll 15 through. seconds. Roll through, roll, through the sh roll through the supers. Oh, yep. Michael Clark, we're three away. Three away. Michael Clark, Cornish game hens, Italian stuff, and mac and cheese. Try, man. You got it, Brandon. Pie. One away. Who's going to make Abby come in here and take some Bang! shots? Bang! Let's go. 51-50 because we are crazy around here. We need to keep that energy going. Oh! Let's go. A ray of sunshine. There it is. We need to keep that energy going. The team played fast and hype. Keep it going. Let's stack some dubs. Wild one! Let's go! Mitch and Jeremy, have a happy turkey day uh, and make the season fun. Thank you. There's three. You took that one. That's four. This is five. Try, Van. Brandon Jasper. Hell, Woo! hell, try, Van. <laughs> Brandon Jasper, for good measure. Michael Clark, another shot for Chugs. Mr. Leroy, all the shots for Chugs. Brandon Jasper, try, Van, join me. MFN Flores, 760. Woo! Love the hype. The team gave each other the game. Hope it's the last. Hope it lasts to the next game. Go Raiders. Let's Was that go. English? Sorry. I. Sorry. <laughs> One fireball shot. Michael Clark. That's a cute pup. Try, Van. You got it, Brandon. I, I love the back and forth. <laughs> array of sunshine. It's Array 21. of sunshine. Wild one. Wild 20. one. Brown Brandon out. Jasper. Brown out. Hell, try, Van. All right. So I already did five. You did one. That's six. Can we just get another fireball? No, but we got a back and forth. Oh, okay. We got a back and forth going. I would say tonight's MVP. And, and you know what? We'll, 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 we'll extend the shot clock another minute oh, because I forgot shit. the fireball. I would one say more tonight's minute. MVP for it's probably Hellcat. Hellcat sending the biggest super, 51-50. Whoever wants to take shots. Well, Abby's got to come in here. She owes us some. I mean, we passed that, so. I'm not Abby, but hopefully I'll do it. Yeah? Well, I think she's coming as well. Come on, come on. Come do on. the locomotion with me. <laughs> oh, you brought tequila. I don't want to smell that. That's terrible. Here you go. <laughs> what about your nails? Mm. Oh, bro. Get, away. Get that away from me. <laughs> How many do you know? We're about we're about twenty. We we owe about twenty. There's one. So now we're down to nineteen on the wall. Yeah, if you guys like to come up here and take a shot. Oh. Abby's like Abby. Oh, bro, that smells terrible. Eighteen. Get away from me! I hate the camera. <laughs> here we go. With the gum. Do you? I, is it cinnamon gum? Uh, 16? That's an old college hack. Uh, <laughs> 16. Yeah. Brandon Jasper said, Chug Sing, no diggity. Yeah, we owe 16. And 17. Yep. We got seven. Well, no, I. I this is my shot glass. Y'all can drink out of those. Chugs, you owe us no diggity. All right. Y'all do the shots. I'll just uh, uh. 17, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Another for Mitch for forgetting me earlier. Reminder, it's all about the 14. Wild one. What do you mean forgot you earlier? Here. 
Another one. So we're at what? 13. Uh, 12. Keep on going. I'm gonna... 11. Rolly, you want you you want another one? Yeah, come on, come on, Rolly. This is uh. <laughs> sort of get down, good lord. <laughs> Baby got them open all over town. Strictly bitch, you don't play around. Cover much ground. Got game by the pound. Getting paid is a forte each and every day. True play away. I can't get her out of my mind. I think about the girl all the time. Bah, bah. I like the way you work it. No diggity. I got to bag it. Bag it up. I like the way you work it. No diggity. I got to bag it. Bag it up. <laughs> Woo. Thursday night shows, for those that don't know, we do a lot of karaoke. So... And after a few fireballs, it makes it easier. Nine. Nine. Nine more. Eight. I like the way you work it. It's perfect. Really underrated. Chugs from Brandon Jasper sing in the club. Yeah, Brandon. Brandon said he was he had to go somewhere, but then Brandon said, "You know what? I'm gonna hang out." <laughs> oh, bro, that's a disgusting one. Look at the size of your hand. Not trying to say anything, but there you go. <laughs> you know what they say. <laughs> uh, all right. How many more we got? Somebody, four? Four more. All right. There's four of us. There's four of us. Here we go. Can we do a little cheers? We can. We, we actually can do a cheers if you all want. Oh. <sighs> Lord Buddy Bear, they'd know if they tuned in. That's right. Silver and Black 831, Liver Nation. Yeah, we got I got the strongest liver in the galaxy. Right. Sal, if you had to pick one former Raider to be our head coach, who would you pick? Why? Let's go, Brandon. I would pick Howie Long. I didn't I didn't realize Sal liked the uh Chargers head coach. That's crazy. Oh boy. Ah. And only if you wanted Abby. Let's go, Abby. Shot, shot, shots. Who's doing that? <laughs> Her hand is shaking. <laughs> I don't even know at this point. Abby was like, I got to work out later. My tolerance is so good anymore. It's Now, I don't know. <laughs> going to need that ice bath. <laughs> right? I'm going to be running on the treadmill, and the guy's going to be looking next to her like, yo, this, smells cinnamon? this chick, this chick <laughs> is smells good. Like, smells like cinnamon. <laughs> Yeah, now the tuxedo is kind of weird. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Abby. Thank Go, Chugs. Go, Chugs. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. All right, Nation. Find me in the club. Bottle full of bub, man. I got what, what you need. need. If you need looking up, I'm into having sex. sex. I ain't into, into making love. love. So come, come give me a hug, hug if you're into getting glup. All right. I think that's all we got. From Jeremy Chugs and I, we're at 420 likes. I think that's a fair number to, to end this show on. <laughs> Appreciate everyone for watching. I think what we're going to do, if you could, we should do one loop previously recorded. Is that possible? <laughs> all right. It's all good, Jeremy. It's all good. So, Jeremy and I, we're going to end the show. I do want you to hop back on screen, though, real quick. That way you can say goodbye to everyone. Uh, we will not be live for Thursday night football. Um, hey, God. I feel like I just burped up a fireball candle. <laughs> it's very descriptive. Um, You've heard of pumpkin spice. That's nothing compared to fireball spice. <laughs> oh, dude, I heard she got kicked out of the Spice Girls. Oof. Yeah, dude, you thought. She was too hot. Definitely too hot to handle. Um, What the hell was I saying? All right, so no, no Thursday show this week. No Thursday show this week, but we will be doing another video you guys will go to video still every single day for the rest of the week. Jeremy and I will be back for our Week 12 game up against Seattle. I do want you all to have a very good Thanksgiving. Yeah, these fireball shots are hitting me a little bit. I didn't really eat anything before today's show, which I don't know why I do that anymore. But, hey, it is what it is. So, seriously, though, have a great Thanksgiving. Eat tons of food. Don't be afraid to send me some pictures. If anybody wants to talk during Thanksgiving, 
One thing that I always try to do is leave my phone on because I do like hanging out with y'all. It's like one of the only days of the year that uh, I know I don't have to work. So if you guys want to say happy Thanksgiving to me, don't be shy. Be, don't be afraid to call me on Thanksgiving on Instagram. If I'm there, I will answer. We can talk. We can have a good time. But for me, you want to say anything before we head out? I just want to say thank you all for everything that y'all do. I mean, I'm, I'm really thankful for Mitch, for Raider Nation, for all of y'all for watching our craziness every week. <laughs> I mean, especially on Thursdays. I know a lot of y'all are really loyal watchers, so I appreciate that. Yep. Um, you know, enjoy your turkey, protect your giblets, and have a great Thanksgiving. All right, y'all. We love you. Have a great Thanksgiving. We will see y'all on Sunday from the Raiders Take on the Sea Chickens. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please make sure you do so, and don't forget to turn on those notifications. Have a happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you Sunday.